Income tax 2021-2022 software example, other itemized deductions. Get ready to get refunds to the max, diving into income tax 2021-2022. Lacert Tax Software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but you might want to have access to the Form 1040, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. A starting point, the single filer, Adam Smith, living in Beverly Hills, 90210, 100,000 on the W-2 income, 12,550 standard deduction. We've got the 87,450 for the taxable income, mirroring that over on our income tax formula, 100,000. We got the standard deduction 12550 taxable income 87450 depending on the tax return to calculate the tax on page number 2 1515 pulling that on over to the excel worksheet 15015 and back to the tax return we're going to be going up to page one we're focused on the standard deduction or itemized deduction first we're going to take a look at one of those unusual kind of kind of circumstances let's open this up to take a look at it and go to the schedule a and we're going down here to the other itemized deductions and we're looking at a federally declared disaster kind of area which is something you're not as likely to see of course hopefully but if there was a federally declared disaster like in your area and you're expecting that your clients if you're working as a tax preparer or yourself are dealing with then you're going to want to do more research uh, about that and you can and you could dive into the form uh, 4684 and publications to do so but this is an area where it's on like the itemized deductions down here in in other itemized deductions but you we want to be able to give the benefit if some if someone's not itemizing so that's an area where we might have another form it's kind of an exception to the rule where we might have the this component that's usually on the itemized deductions and the standard deduction in place let's see how that could work and i'm just going to use the software to basically help out to do that calculation so we're going to go back on over here and let's say that we had a casualty loss i'm basically in where a sale takes place in my in this software in lacert like a like a sale of stock for example and i'm just going to put a generic thing in here so i'm going to say there's personal property that was acquired at various time periods that we lost in whatever disaster federally declared disaster that happened and so i put a negative so it says various and the date sold i'm going to put at the disaster date basically it wasn't sold it was lost at that point 12 uh, 15 i'm going to put the sales price as zero because it was a loss it wasn't actually a sale and then we've got the cost is going to be the ten thousand. that's going to be the the loss that we're looking to put into place i'm going to then go down into the casualty and theft losses and populate some of this information so we can say the the description for whatever took place in terms of the disaster i'm going to say it's a personal uh, loss that is here then we have the disaster loss and so we can say i'm going to say that it was a federally declared qualified disaster and you can look at the irs website or fema website to find that list of the declared last disasters because you're going to need the code and so i'm going to pick up the fema disaster code for i'm going to say it was a 2021 disaster that i'm looking into i'm going to say it's in california and i'm just going to pick one noting that the software can kind of help you out to determine what the what the disaster is because they're going to be on a list that means that lacert can kind of put them in place here so you should be able to find the disa disaster here if you can't then that might be an indication that it's not a qualified disaster and you might want to go to the irs website to do more research qualified california disaster so i'll keep that I'll keep that here fair market fair market value before casualty or theft so I'm going to say the the market value before was 10,000 fair market value after I'm going to say is zero to start out with at least and then fair market value uh, under the safe harbor I'm going to keep well let's see if I put that zero for now and insurance I'm not going to say there's any reimbursement uh, at this point to start off with for multiple personal casualty I'll keep that and we're going to need an address that will be necessary to populate the form so that's the minimum information to just get an idea or a feel for what's going to happen here if I go back to the forms you'll note what happened is it didn't make a schedule a there it basically put this added schedule that we're going to be looking at which is basically a schedule a so itemized deductions but it's got this added kind of component down here where it says that we got the net qualified disaster at the 9005 which we'll take a look at how to calculate in more detail by looking at the form 
uh, 4684 and then it added the standard deduction to it which is the standard deduction that you would generally get in this case for the single filer to get to the 2250. So I'm getting a benefit from this kind of component that's on the itemized deductions, even though I'm not basically itemizing. Notice that no other itemized deductions are pulling over, including like sales tax, for example, because I'm just getting that one itemized deduction. I'm not basically unlocking all the other itemized deductions that could be taken. I'm gonna go back to the first page of the form 1040 and there we have the 2250. Now, if you were to mirror this in our software, it's a little bit complicated in like Excel. If I was trying to figure out what happened, I'd go, okay, schedule A, you might even have a separate schedule A. And I'm gonna say that this is gonna be, let's just put this into place where it's gonna be under other, other, other itemized deductions. So I'll go back on over here and say, okay, let's make some room. I need some room here for my elbows. I need my elbow room. My elbows are cramped. Other itemized deductions. And so I'm gonna make that a header. I'll make it black and white by going to the home tab. We'll make that black and white. And then I'm gonna call this a federally declared, federally declared disaster. Disaster, we'll keep it at that. And then I'm gonna say this one is gonna be, I'll make it another color, like a dark blue maybe, to say that that's gonna be within the other itemized deductions, but I'm gonna to have to do some sub calculations for this one. This is a bit tricky of a one. So I'm gonna leave some blue items here. Let's leave some blue that I can enter some data. And I might do the actual calculations to figure out what the, what the loss is somewhere else. So I'm just gonna put the total amount here, which was, what did I say it was? It was uh, 10,000 we said it was. And then if I look at the calculation of it, notice we only got the 9,500. If I go to the form 4684, why is that? Well, I got the 10,000, this, this form, by the way, called casualty and theft losses for uh, 4684. But we're saying here that it's going to be if the casualty or theft loss is attributable to a federally declared disaster, we check that off and we put the number here. So that's what we did. The type of property, personal property, this is where it's located. Date acquired, various. That's what happens when I put a negative into the software. Then the cost or basis we said was 10,000 and we didn't get any insurance or anything. And it's got no value afterwards. So there's the 10,000, but then we subtracted out this $500. So that's just part of the calculation for whatever reason. So we're gonna say, all right, there's gonna be a negative 500 that's gonna come out here. And then I'll say this is gonna be, this is the total fe federally declared, declared, declared disaster. That can't be spelled right. Is that spelled right? Let's do the spell checker. That's, what's, that's, what, that's what it's for. You don't need to spell with your head. Who does that kind of thing? That's weird disaster okay so then i'm going to sum that up i'm going to try to keep that in this column on the left notice i put that in the white area because it's not going to be a data input that's part of the calculation i can use the software to do i'll underline it i'll sum it up in here i'll sum it up in here so so there it is now notice you might say well what if i didn't have anything here it's going to give us a negative number then that's not what we want that's no good that negative number so what I'll do here is we got to do an if then formula. Let's do an if thing. I'm going to say if brackets, if uh, the logic test would be all of this, which if the sum, let's say the sum of this stuff brackets is greater than zero, then, which is a comma, I want you to take the sum of that stuff, just add it up. But comma, if it's not greater than zero, that is, then put a zero there. There's the logic test, close it up, please. There's the zero. If I put the 10,000 here, testing my logic test, that's not 10,000, that's 100,000. There's the 9,500 logic test doing the logical thing. So uh, that then, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna add that then to other deductions. So let's put let's put some more stuff down here because I could have other other deductions. 
let's insert some more and I'm just going to make this some more blue that I can put like gambling law winnings and losses or losses and stuff like that later. So we'll talk about that in a second. And then I'll sum this up. This will be total, total other itemized deductions, total, to, now I got caps lock, to, total other itemized deductions. And we'll sum that up on the right here, summing it up, sum it up. And then we'll sum up on the outside, sum that up on the outside. So there we got the nine five and that should pull over to page one, but we, it just takes the nine five. And in this area, we got that special situation. It's special right now that it has a schedule a with a disaster thing. So we got to do something funny. If that were to happen, we'd have to say, you know, uh, let's, let's, we'd have to increase this by basically the standard deduction. So I'm taking, I'm taking like the standard deduction plus for whatever reason, I get the casualty the casualty loss, which is, which is this, I'm going to pick up this nine five right there. So now I basically get the standard deduction plus the casualty loss. There's the 2250. If I go on over to my forms, then there's the 2250 getting us to the seven, seven, nine fifty. And I can say, okay, there's the seven, seven, nine fifty. Let the tax return to calculate the tax on page numero dos. Two that is 12203, 12903. I'm totally bilingual. 12903. There we have it. So there's just an, an, an idea of that. Now, obviously, you might say, well, what if I had other deductions over here? Like, what if I had on the Schedule A? Let's add the good old mortgage interest. Let's say that was like 12,000 on the mortgage interest. And then on the taxes, I got I got property taxes too. So then I've got property taxes of let's say another another 7,000. So now I'm over the cap of itemizing without that added loss. So now I'm I'm on to the stand the normal schedule A here where we have the normal schedule A even though we still have this component on the bottom because you could see that we're not just using that bottom component now. We're now using the fact that that we we're, we're getting the other benefits of the other deductions up top as well okay so now let's think about the gambling losses because that's the other big one that people often that comes up oftentimes so let's go back on let's clear this thing out clear it out clear it out and let's think about the gamblers here you can't forget about the gamblers they want to they want they want to do stuff too so i'm going to say let's get rid of this uh i i could go into more detail on obviously if you got insurance related to it, then that would reduce, you know, if you got reimbursed on it, keep that in mind that that, uh, that would affect the amount that you would get to deduct uh, and so on. So, but we'll keep it there. Let's go back to the forms. We're back to then our starting point. So there we are at our starting point. And now we've got gambling losses, let's say. Now, remember, you can only take the gambling losses if you had gambling winnings. So let's imagine we got the schedule A here and uh, we had then the other gambling winnings. This is what we saw in the past. We got gambling winnings here. And we're going to go into that and say gambling winnings WW2G reported possibly from the casino or something. Casino. And we've got winnings. And so let's say we've got, you know, 1,000. Let's say, let's say 10,000 of winnings. We did good. We did good. 10,000 of winnings. And so if I go back on over... And then there's there's the winnings that we have that then flows through to the first page of the 1040. So now we've got our winnings. Well, if I had winnings, I, I might be saying I, I spent like the whole year at the card table winning that $10,000 spending like 60 hours a week, you know, <laughs> doing this. What about all my losses? That took? Well, then uh, then we'd have the losses, but they can only be deducted up to the amount of the winnings and we'd have to clear the itemized deductions in order to be them for them to be beneficial. So if I go then into the law to the schedule A, we're going to say, all right, schedule A, schedule A, and we're going down to the other items. So we're going to say gambling losses now. 
Notice in this software, when it has an override, when it's basically saying, I would, we would prefer you to put it somewhere else, it puts a little O there. So I could put the losses there, but I'm going to say, yeah, maybe I should search for where, where they want to put it. If I go, if I go back on over to the gambling information, we've got this other little item when I put the casino. Also note, when I have this information, I would have to put the EIN number. We talked about that in the prior presentation. However, what I want to focus in on this time is the losses, which I could put up top where it says losses miscellaneous, and then I jump over. That's a little, that, that screen that kind of pops back and forth right there, sometimes kind of confusing to me. I would think you would scroll down to it. But in any case, that's the way the software is on a couple different types of things. So I'm going to put the losses, and let's say the losses were 20,000, right? We had way more losses than winning. It's not 200, not that bad. We're not that bad at the card table, but we'll put the 20 there. Then if I go back on over to the forms, then I'm going to go down to the Schedule A, and the Schedule A, it capped it, of course, at the 10,000. So we can't have more losses than the winnings. So now you can see that the winnings are taken on the Schedule 1, all of the winnings being reported, and then the losses are on Schedule A being capped at the point in time or at the amount of the winnings. And we're currently not getting the losses because the losses are below the threshold for us to basically be over able to itemize. Now, if we had substantial losses over that amount and or if we had other things that would open up the capacity to take on more, more stuff for itemizing, such as a home, which has the mortgage interest and the property taxes, and that would open up possibly the capacity to take more of the gambling losses. But let's just increase the gambling losses just for the fun of it and say we're going to go back on over and let's go back up top and say the winnings were 15000 and the losses were 20,000. So now we could say, okay, schedule one has now the 15,000 on the winnings, which pulls over to the first page of the 1040, 15,000. And then we got the schedule A now taking the losses of the 15 because it's greater than, or the total of them being greater than the, the standard deduction. So let's put that into our Excel worksheet over here and see if we can mirror that. We could say, okay, the disaster loss thing, that's not happening anymore. So I'm going to say that's gone. But notice I took that away and it doesn't mess up anything. And I go back to the first page and everything is back to what it should be. So I think everything is working properly with regards to that. I'm going to go back to the Schedule A and say that we have gambling losses. Gambling losses. So let's go. Let's also put the income over here on Schedule 1 where I had gambling winnings, which I said was 15000 so we could, could do a little formula over here. We could go back to Schedule A, and we might say that the gambling losses, for example, are, we said, 20000 and it would be limited to the amount that we put on the income side. So maybe then I do another calculation here, and I'm going to insert, insert, and then I'm going to make this white because it's going to be a calculation in and of itself. This is getting complex. This is getting complex. It's not that bad. Don't worry. It's not that bad. So this is going to be then equal to, this is going to be equal to, well, let's do an if then function. We need an if then because it needs to be capped at, at whatever the winnings were. So it's going to be equals if. So I'm going to say if this number, and I'm going to say is less than, if it's less than, this number over here, which was in the income line, the 15, notice I could still see it up top here, even though even though I'm on a different page. So I could put the comma up top just to verify that before I jump back on over here. So so then when I jump back on over, notice then it added another it added another argument. So I gotta be kind of careful when I'm jumping back and forth. So let's see what it says. It says this one up top, if that is less than this this item below then i'm going to say comma then i want you to take this number so then if it's not comma less than then i want you to take the capped number which is on the additional income the fifteen thousand. and again you can kind of see the argument up top and then i'm going to put brackets to close it up and enter so that means that if it was like seven thousand let's test out the logic then it would take the 7,000. If it was 20,000, it's going to cap it at the 15, the income level. Now, then if I go to the total itemized deductions, I'm going to have to adjust this a little bit. It's going to be equal to this number up top plus the sum 
of this stuff down below. And so there, there we have it. So that's going to be the 15 in this case. And that 15 pulls over to the first page of the form 1040. So now we're taking the 15,000. We also have the state taxes that have now been opened up. So if I go back on over, we have the sales tax of the 879 that opened up. So let's go back up. To, that is spelled wrong. Gamble, gambling, gabbling. Oh, God. All right. I'll fix that in a second. Hold on a sec. 879 879 so then if we sum that up we're down here at the 15879 15879 let's run the spell check spelling is for computers man spelling's just for computers human beings don't do that kind of stuff deductible that's computer work so then we got the 15879, pulling that over to the first page. There's the 15879. That gives us the 99121. So if I go back on over to page one, we've got now, I also had the, the income. So we got the 15, the 15871, 99121, letting the software do the calculation on the tax. Page two is now going to be at the 17811. So 17811. So that's just an idea, you know, of, of those, some of the more common kind of other deduction questions that you might have um, with regards to them.